Hi, Alexander. Great to have you here. Thanks for making the time for this conversation. Hi, Fedoris. Happy to, to be here as well. Uh, excited to, to share some news about Ronin and, and why we decided to partner with Chainlink uh, and this important milestone. No, of course. Happy to dive deeper. There's a lot of history uh, that Ronin uh, as an ecosystem has, a lot of history, of course, in our partnership in the earlier days and now as well uh, going forward. So many things to unpack here. Mm -hmm. But before um, we go any further, I would like to hear from you, like your your story and Axis and uh, Ronin's story as a result of that. Sure. I mean, yeah, for those who don't know me, I'm Alexander. I'm one of the co-founders of Sky Mavis, creators of Axie Infinity and the Rona Network. Sky Mavis, I'm the chairman, so I lead everything on the commercial side pretty much. I used to work a little bit on the community and products, but now I'm very focused on building out the, the Rona ecosystem. So whenever you work with game studios, uh, for example, that, that falls under, under my purview. Um, you know, the, the story of Axie and Ronin is, is, is one of exponential growth. You know, we've been building for close to seven years now. Um, and I think everyone knows the Axie story about how it blew up, but, you know, it's probably not as widely known that we have been working for many, many years, shipped a couple of games even before it really blew up. So I think it's just a, a story of determination and grit. And, and that's also where Ronin Network uh, comes into play because, you know, before we had Ronin, uh, we had most of our assets on Ethereum and we were constrained by the gas fees there to really uh, build out the game economy and what's happening on chain. But with our own blockchain, uh, we were then able to scale uh, moving forward. So that's basically what we want to provide for, for other game developers too. And we believe that the reason why they will want to work with us is, is our deep experience uh, with game developers. That, that's basically it. Like we're very historically been very, very focused on the, on the game developer ecosystem. No, that's absolutely uh, the case. Like me following you guys for a very long time as well, you effectively created play to earn, right? Uh, you are the leaders in the space, in this paradigm. You've created a lot of uh, uh, best practices for, for the space. Now, let me deep dive a bit more into that. Um, if you were to say Ronin's approach on Web3 Gaming, you kind of alluded bits and pieces there. What would you say makes it so successful? Is it publishing, distribution, is it the community? What is it? Yeah, so I would say it's it's a combination of, of, of all of those things. And in addition, kind of a, a, um, a product stack, which is tailored for game developers. But I think if we, if we start a little bit about game selection and, and curation and, and what are kind of the teams that we are looking for, I think we have to start with the experiences that we had with Axie, you know, what we think is working and where we think we are in the meta game, I guess you can call it of the, of the web three development cycle. So I think in every sort of, um, cycles, let's say it's in, in, uh, internet, uh, history, if it's in game development history, you're always constrained by technological demands and technological requirements. Uh, and for blockchain, uh, you know, development, that, that, that really is no, no different. Uh, so when we started out with Axie, you know, we were constrained by Ethereum, the amount of, you know, uh, transactions we could have on chain. And, and I think that also uh, limited the amount of design space that we could have uh, for Axie. So we actually put a lot of our things off chain, which is like the game logic, for example. Um, but we had some of the economic aspects on chain. And I would say for Axie, uh, where we innovated the most is probably not on the uh, on the uh, game design aspect of it, but it's rather on the economic aspect of it, kind of using the unique benefits that Web3 enables to build something new that really the world had never experienced before. So looking at Axie, that's really the, the main innovation. And I think that it really kind of speaks to where we are in the game development cycle of Web3. I think there's a lot of learnings that we need to take on the game economy side to make this work at scale. So looking at Axie, once again, it was explosive growth, you know, breeding actually used, I think VRF at one point as well, uh, Chainlink's uh, kind of Oracle service to, to, to ensure that, you know, creation of new Axies were fully randomized. But that that's kind of just a sidestep here, just, just chilling Chainlink a little bit on that one. But I think that uh, it really is just the, the first step of, of, uh, of what is possible when you utilize, uh, utilize Web3 and, and kind of crypto in it. And I think game economies is really the, the most constraining piece here, because if you look at Web2 development, the graphical kind of 
uh, innovations that we've had there over the past 20 years is pretty amazing. But the economic innovation that we had with Web3 is really, really only at the starting line. So that's why when we look at Axie and other games that we actually want to partner with, we think it's quite difficult to combine the really, really heavy graphical innovations and the those things with the early stages of economic innovation, because the likelihood of the economic innovations needing more and more fine tuning, iterations, understanding is so, so heavy. So that means that the games that go to market, like Axie, let's say like Pixels, which went from 300,000 or 300 users from when they migrated to Roland to over 700,000, they need to focus on the economic innovations. So when that stops working, you need to pivot, you need to change things. And if the game cycle or the game development side of it is too slow because it's too focusing on the graphics, that means that it's very, very difficult to kind of find those two kind of pieces together, which then is really what made Axie explosive. So to kind of summarize, the game economy side and the game uh, game design side, all of these things need to combine into making an, a new user experience, which then again will take us into the stratosphere when, when it comes to onboarding every single person in the world into blockchain uh, games. And I think that's also what might create jobs uh, for the future uh, for hundreds of millions of people if these game economies are, are you know designed correctly. The vision is actually very enticing and uh, very ambitious, which is what every team in our space should be doing. We should be looking to change uh, the existing paradigm, which is great to see from your team as well. Now, you mentioned very briefly in well, the seal you mentioned about the original like start of our partnership with Chainlink VRF. Now we're entering into a new stage with Chainlink CCIP. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit more about what how this new step in our partnership came about give us a bit more context as to what you were looking to achieve looking at your existing bridge infrastructure and effectively how does ccap fit the needs that you had outlined for your own bridge yeah so that also goes back into some of the ways some of the or some of the ways that we make products at sky mavis so when we started building you know as i said it's six, over six years ago we needed to make almost everything ourselves. And the same thing actually goes for the Roman Bridge. You know, it was self-made. And a part of what we are the best at, I would say, is innovation and iteration. It's not necessarily long-term security. And I really think we got punished for that uh, as a company, you know, now two times, which is why we really need to make sure that this cannot happen again. So that we want to stay in our lane and innovate where we think we have the most impact where we think that we can onboard the most users. And, and that's just not the bridge at all. So then we started looking into, okay, which other providers in the space do we think can provide the service that we are missing the most, which is security. That, that That's just basically it. You know, we have the users, we have the TVL. We don't need any of the kind of help there. We, we can provide most of those things ourselves. The only, the biggest thing that we need here is security. And if we can focus on that aspect from the partners and that we're looking for, then that, that's the only thing that kind of matters. So, you know, meeting you uh, in real life, I think, and also Sergey, and I think it was really great uh, understanding a little bit more about, you know, uh, CCIP, Chainlink's history, of course, you know, being the Oracle service provider for the entire space for so long, you know, always securing, um, I don't know, billions uh, is, is, is really uh, at the core of what we needed. And then from there on, it was a voting process where we let the community take, or the validators of, of, of Ronin take part in this, uh, in this process. Uh, and from there on out, the implementation is is basically on the on the validator set and the rest of, of Sky Mavis to implement uh, the the chaining CCIP as that was voted in as the favorable provider, which is something that I'm also you know excited about. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about the history and how we ended up here. No, thank you, thank you for that. And like I think context as well and what you're looking to achieve through this partnership is very helpful. I have to say before like I tackle the next point you kind of brought in my mind that have been involved in many of these processes already. You guys have done a tremendous job in creating a very thoughtful uh, process, a very detailed process as well, on how things should be evaluated in similar situations. So I can, honor, I can fully recommend you on that and the team as well. Like you really set the stage and the benchmark of how this uh, process should look. Now, one thing you mentioned that triggers my next question. You said that what you care about is finding the ways and making the advancements that can bring more people into gaming. 
you look to partner with us for the security aspect for the bridge. But now that resource will be um, something that we provide. That functionality will be there from us. What are you looking now uh, from your perspective as you're looking to scale the running ecosystem further? What are your next steps now that this part is settled? Yeah, so over the past few years, we've had so many different teams that wanted to partner with us from the gaming side, from DeFi, from all sorts of other applications in the space, because what they are looking for is distribution. They really want access to the players that we have. And, and you know, we've been very careful with letting the, the, the right partners come and, and play basically with the, with the community. But what that has also done is set a kind of a maximum uh, to the growth that we have at Ronin. So, you know, I really think it's time to be more open to the entire space. And, and that will happen first with DeFi. And I think DeFi is one of the cornerstones of, of, of crypto. It's one of the, the products that have uh, product market fit clearly. You know, I, I just met Hayden from Uniswap and we were talking about, you know, the stories of, of Uniswap enabling players from Axie to receive some money uh, from, the, from the gameplay that they had because they used Uniswap, the protocol, to swap their tokens from SLP into ETH and to USDC and then spend that money in real life shop. I mean, the, that is really one of the visions for, for crypto and, and the impact that had. You know, he was also quite moved when we were saying that, you know, People got the airdrop from Uniswap and it really changed many people's lives, particularly in, 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 the, in the emerging nations like, like, uh, like Philippines. And I think that now we're getting into the stage where we really want some of these primitives on Ronin. And I'm really excited to work uh, more closely with, uh, with, uh, uh, with Chainlink on this to kind of find the right partners, making sure that they are have the security that, that they need. Uh, and from there on out, it maybe even open Ronin fully so that anyone can tap into the network that we have. And from there on, kind of grow the ecosystem massively and, and uh, make sure that people see that Ronin is not, not only for gaming, but that's really where we started. I think the potential for Ronin is to support, you know, every single person in the world who wants to do on-chain transactions. I think that's where we are headed. Um, but, you know, starting with gaming is a little bit of how we we, we saw this kind of growing the pie as, as big as it could be. We need to make sure that, we have the, the 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 foundation set, and from there on, we will grow and grow and grow. Because users, the users that we have on Ronin, they actually want to interact with the broader like crypto ecosystem, and that means DeFi. That might mean you know meme coins. That might mean everything else that we actually don't have because we're so closed for now. But I think now we're heading into a new direction with Ronin, and, and I'm super excited about it. And I'm really excited to have Chainlink as an early partner uh, for a more open Ronin. No, we're excited when you. Shared that vision uh, when we met in person. Uh, I found it very enticing, very interesting, and we'd love to, of course, continue our partnership there and contribute from our side. Are there some, as you look at, at, at this future, are there some key initiatives that you have in mind that you want to perhaps give us an early view of? <laughs> No, I think asking for, um, asking for some alpha, effectively. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a little bit hard for me to, to, to be very specific about this but you know tvl is definitely uh, something that we are uh interested in growing because we see a lot of um you know particularly degens kind of pricing blockchains based on the tvl um you know right now the tvl on Ronin is is you know sub 100 million last i checked maybe a little bit 100 120 you know it obviously fluctuates um depends on how you look at it if you only look at ethereum and usdc it's different if you look at you know with other tokens it's over billions uh, so I think that, uh, or with unit, I would kind of um, AXS, Ronin, you know, SLP, Payroll, Pixels, then we're talking uh, in the billions. So I think people have all sorts of different measurements of TVL. Um, so we're interested in kind of making it known to the broader crypto space, the amount of traction that we have. You know, Ronin has over 1 million uh, daily uh, on-chain active wallets uh, on like any given day, usually anything up to 3 million uh, monthly actives which I think is still quite small to where we want to be, but compared to many of these other chains, which are more ghost chains, I think, you know, our really, the, the edge that we have is distribution and community. And we've been very kind of pragmatic about technology as well. We think that the only thing that matters really in crypto is the, the people who use this tech rather than the tech itself. And I think Bitcoin is really the, the proof of that. But if tech was everything that mattered, I mean, Bitcoin wouldn't be here today. So the people that really care about Roland, the community, they came from Axie, they, they, they stay for gaming and for everything else that we have. And I'm excited now to expand beyond that. 
And that means TVL, that means restaking protocols, that might mean all of the other things that people are familiar with with on other chains. That's kind of what we are aiming for. But, you know, it could take time uh, to get there too. But, you know, I, of course, when we do end up uh, going there, we launch with some pretty big partners. That's that's what I'm excited about. Alex, you shared a lot about your plans with gaming, uh, the gaming ecosystem and how you want this to evolve. I know you also have some strategic initiatives there, like the Forge program. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, I mean, Ronan Forge is, is one of the ways that we want to grow the pie and actually you know, work more with, uh, with uh, gaming partners who are a little bit different than, than what we've done before. Um, so you know, we have a couple of programs within Sky Mavis. You know, we have direct publishing where you know, we might make a larger investment into a game studio and then we build closely with them. They get access to all the tools and services that we have, and also direct connections with the with the founding team of Sky Mavis, and that's been tremendously popular. You know, Pixels is a part of that, um, and now we launched Grown and Forge, which is more of a lightweight program for that, um, so that more teams can get access to the tools and the services that we have, and some of the insights that we have about building like really solid, uh, you know, economies, for example, how to build a great community, and then also, of course, they get access to building on Ronin. Um, and that's a little bit of a different one. So, you know, we might make a, make a smaller investments, but it's a, it's a way for, for Sky Mavis to give a more of a stamp of approval to the community that, you know, we've done some initial DD here. Uh, this is safer. So it's a way for us to open up Ronin progressively uh, while still having some skin in the game to, to make sure that, that these studios are operating at, at a very high level. And, you know, at the same time as we did Ronin Forge, we also had a, another massive update uh, to the Ronin Wallet, which is called Ronin Waypoint. In short, what it does is it now enables uh, users to very seamlessly create their own non-custodial wallets just by using email. And that can even happen within the game inside, you know, Unity type of game and real type of game. You just like very simply log in. Any sort of normal uh, player will do that. Uh, a wallet is created on the back end. They can start playing. They can get some assets. They can then from trade from there because there are gasless ways or there are like uh, gas sponsorships that the game uh, developer can do while they work with us. So we have some very unique innovations through through Roman Waypoints. And um, maybe most interesting, like we can also um, provide this service for Telegram. And I think that's particularly cool uh, when you think about the opportunities to, to capture even more distribution, because obviously Telegram is a great distribution plan, plan platform. You know, we might provide some services to those players using Roman Waypoint and, and the Roman Wallet. So those are some summaries there. Awesome. Both great advancements and great to see that uh, the results from these initiatives. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Well, I know I post a lot for the alpha, but I'm glad you were able to share some bits and pieces. And I'm even more excited to be working with you on this and making this a reality. It might take some time, yes, but we're here for the long term as well. Yeah, same for us. I'm super excited about it. Uh, to everyone who's ha hanging out at, at SmartCon, uh, I think this might be the second time I'm speaking here, but uh, yeah. Uh, really excited to be working with uh, with Chainlink on this. So have a good one. Awesome. See you, Alex. Thank you.